Hello. In this fifth video of our introduction to contour integrals, we're going to talk about using the ML inequality to bound the modulus of an integral. Now the ML inequality draws its name from uh, the actual inequality you see in the theorem here. And the theorem is simply that if f is a continuous function on a smooth curve c, and if we can bound the modulus of f on that curve by this real number m, then actually the modulus of the integral as a whole can be bounded by ml, where l is the length of the curve. Now, this is just an inequality. Um, it gives us an upper bound on the modulus of the integral. But sometimes that's what we need. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say that we want to discuss the integral of e to the minus z squared along c, where c is that contour we used in the last video, uh, consisting of a, a, a line segment from negative 3 to 3, and the semicircle that takes you back from 3 down to negative 3. Now, I can't find an exact value for this integral very easily. Um, you can try and use the process we, we talked about in the last video, but it's just not going to be very nice because the uh, antiderivative is, is a little bit hard to take. So what we'll do is the next best thing. Since I can't find an exact value for this integral, maybe I'll come up with a bound on it. How big can it be? And when we talk about how big something is, we mean how big is the modulus or the absolute value. All right, so this is what the ML inequality is made for. Let's uh, feed this integral into there. The ML inequality says that the modulus of this definite integral, whatever it is, is going to be less than or equal to the maximum modulus of, a, of the function of a point on that curve times the length of that curve. Now the length of the curve is pretty simple. Uh, it's a line segment of length 6 and a semicircular arch of length 3 pi. But now let's take a look at how big the function can be in terms of its modulus uh, as we move along that curve. Now the absolute value or, or modulus of e to the minus z squared is going to be e to the real part of the exponent. That's just a property of uh, exponential uh, expressions like this. Now as we write z as x plus iy and we square it and put a minus in front and we take the real part, what we'll end up with is minus x squared plus y squared. Now this is all in the exponent of the e and uh, as you look at it this is going to vary depending on where you are on, on the path. But because we're trying to find an upper bound, what we want to do is see what's the worst this could be. How big could this possibly be? Now, we want to make the exponent as big as we can. And uh, that means making y large and making x as small as possible, as close to zero as possible. Now, luckily, we can accomplish both of those things at the same time. At this point at the top of the contour, y is equal to 3 and x is equal to 0. And anywhere else, the y is going to be a little bit less than 3, the x is going to be a, bit, a little bit larger than 0, and this exponent will end up being smaller. So the best we can do, the largest we can make this uh, expression, is e to the 3 squared, or e to the 9. And that tells us that the value of our integral has a modulus which is less than or equal to e to the 9 times 6 plus 3 pi. Now, feeding that into a calculator, you'll get something that's roughly 125,000. And that's what the ML inequality will tell us. We know that this integral, whatever it is, has a modulus that is less than or equal to 124,988. Now, this is a little bit unsatisfying because if you knew a little bit more, you'd be able to say that actually the value of that integral is exactly zero. So the modulus would be exactly zero. And so 125,000 is an upper bound, it's true but it's not a very tight one, not a very good one. And there's a moral to be, uh, to be drawn from this. The ML inequality does not promise any kind of accuracy. It's not guaranteed to be a good estimate of the value of the modulus of the integral. It's just an upper bound, and it may be good, it may not be good. You'll find though, as we go along, the ML inequality will be useful in a number of places uh, where we don't necessarily know the value of an integral, but we do want to know something about how big it could possibly be. So you'll see it pop up again. One other moral is that maybe we need to put some effort into learning facts like this. How do we know that the value of that integral is exactly, is exactly equal to zero? Well, that's what we'll talk about when we make it to section 5.3 on the Cauchy-Gorsau theorem. So stay tuned. In the meantime, I'll see you in class.